Hey guys, Cam here from PhoneDog.com and welcome to a dogfight of epic proportions. You can expect to see all sorts of gunfighting and bombs and explosions and sharks with laser beams on their heads. I think I might have oversold that one slightly. Hey guys, I'm Cam from PhoneDog.com and I have the Sony Xperia Z2 and the LG G3. Two of the hottest phones on the market right now, but which one is the best? We're going to put them both through their paces and see which one comes out on top. Now we'll start off as always with design. And overall dimensions are actually quite similar. The LG is ever so slightly shorter than the Xperia Z2, but it is a tiny bit wider and a tiny bit thicker. But because of the curved shape, it actually feels slimmer than the Sony, and it feels a little bit smaller as well. The curve does give it a more comfortable feel in hand, whereas the Sony... Because it's slightly heavier and it's square and flat and glass, it doesn't feel as good in hand, even though it is smaller. So both are made from entirely different materials. Sony went with the more premium glass and metal finish, whereas LG went with plastic. But LG's done a really good job with the plastic. It doesn't feel flimsy. Even the back cover when you take it off doesn't feel flimsy. It's all rather solidly built. Both have got really nice and easy buttons to press. The LG arguably is easier because it has the buttons all on the back. Your power and volume buttons are in the middle on the back, so it doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed, you can get to them with your index finger. With the Sony, they're placed on the right-hand edge, so you can easily get to them with your right thumb, but with your left hand, you have to reach around with your index or middle finger. It takes a little while to get used to, but neither is terrible. Now there are pros and cons to both phones' designs. On the one hand, the Sony is really solid, looks premium, it's made of premium materials, and the LG is really comfortable in hand, and on the front it does look fantastic because the bezel is so slim, it makes every other phone's bezel look like it's just way too fat. And obviously the Sony is waterproof and dustproof as well, which does give it a bit of an edge, but it kind of hampers some of the other experiences. And it does mean that you have to have these flappy plastic flaps over all your ports, which kind of take a little bit away from the premium design. It may not be made from the most premium materials, but the way that LG's used the plastic and shaped it and designed it so that they can make a big screen phone feel really comfortable in one hand is fantastic. So I'm rewarding this round to the LG because it's light, comfortable and looks great. And then we get onto the display, which is the big talking point with the LG G3 and I'll say that this really is no competition. LG G3 has a Corning Gorilla Glass 3 coated 5.5 inch IPS LCD display. It is fantastic. It has a resolution of 1440 by 2560, giving it a pixel density of over 500 ppi, 534 pixels per inch to be precise. That's not what's great about the display on the LG G3. What's great is how close the actual display panel is to the surface of the glass. It gives the impression that all your icons and all your content on the screen are floating on top of the surface. It really is fantastic. And because there's less material between the display panel and the bit that you actually press, it means that you actually get more clarity, you get more quality in color and contrast. And that adds to the sharpness to create one of the best screens on a phone on the market right now. Now the Sony screen isn't terrible. It's still 424 pixels per inch on a full HD 5.2 inch display. It uses Sony's own triluminous mobile technology, which does give good results. But when you compare it to the LG G3, it really is no match. It's not as bright. The colors aren't as good. In fact, sometimes they just come out a little bit washed out. Now, I won't say the colors are terrible. They're good. It's just when you place it next to the G3 that they start to look a little bit lackluster. So the display round also goes to the LG G3. Now we get on to the camera, something that most people really look at when they're wanting to buy a phone. And it really is a tale of two cities. Both companies have focused on entirely different features to actually accentuate and to make great. On LG's side, they have introduced this sort of laser-equipped autofocus system, which does focus really, really quickly. And when you're in use, you definitely notice this. 
LG also has optical image stabilization, which sadly only works when you're taking pictures, but both cameras are capable of 4K resolution video recording, and both have video stabilization as well. But actually, in almost every way, the Sony beats the LG G3, and it's not because of the megapixels necessarily. The way that the Sony processes the images and gives you a great final result is fantastic, and it really is one of the best cameras on any phone out right now. Colors are good, depth of field is good, sharpness is fantastic. It also has an incredible array of great fun features as well. You can create background blur, you can create great panoramas, you can record in 4K like I've already mentioned. Even got virtual reality things on there which aren't necessarily needed. But it does add to the experience of using a fantastic phone. With LG you just get this impression that all they've done is to create a camera which focuses really quickly and actually does produce some really great detailed shots, but where it lacks is actually in the color reproduction. When you're recording video or when you're taking shots, sometimes you can find that actually the colors are not great. You get highs and lows, you get really bright exposure and shadows and nothing in between, which leaves your photos lacking in color and it leaves them lacking in a little bit of life. It's not a poor camera. Not by any means, I have been able to get some great shots, especially close-up shots, macro shots have been particularly good. But it's everything else that it doesn't seem to be doing as well as the Z2. So this round does go to the Xperia Z2. Now we get on to performance, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting. The LG G3 that I was sent is a 16 gigabyte version, which only has two gigabytes of RAM. The Sony Xperia Z2 has three gigabytes of RAM as standard. Both of them have a quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor, but the LG G3 has a 2.5 GHz one, whereas the Sony Xperia Z2 has a 2.3 GHz one. Now, neither of the phones runs perfectly smoothly all the time. Both are generally fast and will open up apps quite easily, but there is a difference in performance. When I placed them side by side and I launched the same apps at the same time, what I noticed was actually the Z2 opens up the apps slightly quicker almost every time. Now there's not a massive noticeable difference and if you actually own and personally use an LG G3 you're not going to open an app and wish that it was faster. Because unless you're looking at something faster right next to it then you're not going to notice. But the Z2 was noticeably faster. Every now and then you did get some lag but what I noticed more was actually with the LG G3. Because when I was using an app that was actually quite graphically intense. When I went back to the home screen after that straight away what you'd notice is that the only thing on the screen for a tiny second was the app icons. Then I would get my widgets and then I would get my wallpaper and there was this noticeable staggered delay in the way that the operating system or the processor was actually loading the information just on my home screen. And that wasn't something I got on the Xperia Z2 and it was kind of a little bit disconcerting. So actually the Sony Xperia Z2 only slightly edges this round but I will say this as a sort of disclaimer, there is a 3GB LG G3 out there that might make the difference. I don't know, I haven't used it. The Z2 wins this round based on my experience with the two phones. Now onto battery life. For my regular to light use, well, I regularly get two days charge or two days use out of a full charge on both phones. Actually, the Z2 does have a longer lasting battery when it comes to on-screen performance. And considering that the LG G3 has got way more pixels on the screen to power, then that does make sense. So you will get great battery life from both phones, but in experience the Z2 slightly edges it again by a really tiny narrow margin. And last but not least, let's get on to audio performance, something that's becoming a big deal nowadays. It never used to be, but it is now thanks to HCC and boom sound. The Sony Xperia Z2 does have front-facing stereo speakers, and when you're listening to music or watching movies, and with your loudspeakers on, when you compare the two phones, the Sony Xperia Z2 is just miles better. Granted, the LG G3 might actually get a little bit louder, but the quality of the audio is nowhere near as good. What you'll find is that it doesn't really get the basses as well, and when you get to the higher ranges and the trebles, you actually get a really harsh sound. 
so harsh that actually you need to turn it down. And you get a little bit of distortion and the mid-range really isn't there at all. The stereo speakers on the Z2 give you a much better and more balanced sound. And the same goes actually with the headphones that come in the box. Sony has a noise cancelling, digital noise cancelling program that actually works in conjunction with the headphones that come in the box and give you a really great sound. LG G3's in-box headphones are actually rather good as well. They're solidly built, they've got metal caps on them, they feel comfortable, but the sound just isn't quite there again. So in the audio performance, the Sony Xperia Z2 does win that round quite convincingly. So in the end, we've looked at six different aspects of two phones. The LG G3 won in the design and display rounds, whereas the Xperia Z2 won in terms of performance and audio, battery and camera. So if you count them up and look at them objectively, actually the Sony Xperia Z2 comes out on top. So I guess I have to declare that phone the winner. But even as I say that, I don't believe myself because I prefer the LG G3. And I guess that's just how these things work out. I'm at phone dog underscore cam on Twitter. Please feel free to get in touch with me. Use the comments below if you've got any comments, questions or remarks to make. Feel free. I'll see you again soon.